Uh, Danny, you have lobbied extensively against the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, the JCPOA. Uh, you think it's a bad deal, and like Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, you welcomed President Trump's decision to pull the United States out of that deal to violate it. So to be clear, you don't agree that the deal, with all its faults, is working and is putting off the realisation of the Iranian nuclear vision by 10 to 15 years? No, if you look for the last two and a half years since the deal was signed in Vienna, you see the aggression of Iran not only has, has multiplied by two, by ten times. Iran, since signing the deal, has become much more aggressive, uh, has not stopped uh, testing uh, ballistic missiles, and you do ballistic missiles only to put uh, a warhead, which is nuclear, nothing else. And the deal itself is not actually neutralizing the capabilities of Iran. It just supposedly suspends it and... So people who, and, say, uh, so people uh, who say the Iran deal has neutralized a major threat to the world, they're wrong? Absolutely. It's maybe, That's maybe, the former head of Shin Bet, Israeli intelligence, course, Carmi Gillen. You're right. Maybe, maybe they and, were and just... And the quote I said earlier about, with all its faults, it's working, it's putting off realization of the Iranian nuclear vision. Do you know who maybe, said that? Probably. The head of Israel's military, General Gadi Eisenkot. So what do you know that the head of Israel's military and the former head of its spy service don't know? And guess what? Why is it that the head of Israel's military, the former head of Shin Bet, the former head of Mossad, your spy agency, the former head of Israeli military intelligence, the former head of Israel's Atomic Energy Commission, the chair of Israel's space agencies, your country's top military, defense, intelligence, nuclear experts are saying the deal's a good deal. It protects Israel, it protects the region, it protects the world. Well, Why I... should we ignore all of them and trust you, Benjamin Netanyahu, and Donald Trump? They do not say it's a good deal. He yeah. said it's the, be the situation be better than before. In 1992, your prime minister said Iran was three years away from building the nukes. That was 26 years ago. In 1995, he said Iran was three to five years away from building nukes. In 2009, he said they were one to two years away from building nukes. The boy who cried wolf had a better record with wolves no. than Netanyahu <laughs> has with Iran's nuclear program. Why do you think you have any credibility, the Israelis, when you come and talk about Iran's nuclear because program? Because you've been wrong for 26 years. We were not wrong some things had happened in between. There were some who prevented Iran to rush for it. And there were some... Come on, there were some Every two to three were... years, Netanyahu issued a warning and suddenly something happened to make his warning well, just inaccurate. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you... You've been that, scaremongering you know, The Iranians years. themselves say that the international community is sabotaging their program. So, okay. things have happened. Okay. That's it. Okay, let me ask you this question, sabotaging their program. How many nuclear weapons does Iran have as of today? Right now, I hope none. Okay, how many does Israel have? No idea. No idea? You were in the government, they don't tell you that stuff? No idea. Who do they tell? No idea, I'm telling you, I uh, never discussed it. But it's, it's irrelevant. It's between, you never discussed Israel's nuclear weapons. You can say that hand on heart, you've never discussed Israel's nuclear weapons. You're expecting us to believe that the Deputy Foreign Minister of Israel never discussed Israel's nuclear deterrent. Seriously, then? No. Uh, so let, tell, let me tell you. No. It's not all slogans and sound bites, Mehdi. Tell yourself. I did friend. not discuss Israel nuclear weapons. I did discuss Israel nuclear policy. There is a big difference. Okay. 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 So now we've got past that semantic evasion. No, no. You have to. <laughs> you How have many to... nuclear weapons does Israel have? His experts say it's anywhere between 80 and 400. So what? So, so what? what? Yeah. So what? So, Has Israel ever so threatened... Do you recognize the hypocrisy of Israel no. having a secret illicit nuclear weapons program that it won't open up its doors to and won't talk about and then lecturing everyone else in the region Absolutely about nuclear weapons? Absolutely not. You know why? Absolutely. <laughs> you talk about hypocrisy. I tell you. So let's start with the legal and formal. Yeah. Israel has never been a member, a signatory of the NPT. So we are not breaking any rules. Oh. Iran was, Iraq was, Syria is, and they all try to, to cheat. Ah, Number so we one. never recognize the laws secondly, in the first place. No, okay, secondly, Israel is the only country in the world who has been, right, threatened to just erase them. Has Israel ever threatened to erase and attack any country? Uh, I no. think you'll find plenty no. of pretty no. genocidal statements from Israeli show it, leaders. Show it to me. Shimon Peres said in response to Mahmoud Ahmadinejad that we could wipe Iran, Iran somehow. Iran has every day threatening to erase I'm not Israel. About Iran. I'm asking about Israel's Saddam nuclear Saddam Hussein program. said he would burn the entire country of Israel. Okay. Assad, Hamas, okay. you know what, even members How? of Israeli Knesset, it's very, it's very Arab country. Danny, yeah. I'll ask again. We've gone off on a lovely diversion, which you're the master of. How many nuclear weapons does Israel have? 
I don't know. By the way, another diversion, which I have to say. No, no. I have to you say. You can't pre-announce your diversions. <laughs> Let me ask again. If an Iranian guest came on my show and I asked him about Iran's nuclear program, he said, I'm, I don't know, I'm not going to talk about it. Would you be okay with that? You'd be outraged. Of course and I would And you be. sit here as a former minister of the Israeli government saying, oh, I don't know, I never I talked be. about nukes because, with anyone. Because there's, there was like 16 United Nations Security uh, 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 Council resolutions against Iran. And Iran there is against Israel. And there is Iran. against Israel as Not well. About about, about your nuclear, nuclear program? No. Yes, there is. UN so Resolution 487. Let me read it to you. The UN Security Council in 1981 says, calls upon Israel urgently to place its nuclear facilities under the safeguards of the IAEA. Why haven't you done that? Because... <laughs> I'll tell you all why. Because we want to live and survive. This is the only reason. Okay. Live and survive. But you are defying a UN Security it. Council resolution on your live secret nuclear weapons program. Live and survive. That's it. Okay, uh, Avi Schleim, when Danny talks about the threat from Iran, do you recognize that language? How big a threat, in your view, is Iran to Israel today? Uh, Iran is not an existential threat to Israel, but it is a strategic threat. Now, let's compare the records of these two countries. Iran has never attacked a neighbor. Israel has repeatedly attacked its neighbors. Iran signed the non-proliferation treaty. Israel has refused to sign. Iran submits to inspection by the, by the International Nuclear Energy Agency. Israel refuses to submit. Iran has no nuclear weapons. Israel has between 75 and 400 nuclear weapons. So Israel poses an existential threat to Iran. Now, okay. Okay, briefly and